Hello, good afternoon. My name is Afraid Pal. I'll be taking this uh, <clears throat> business environment session. And uh, today we're going to look at the L03, which is learning outcome number three, to understand the impact of marketing environment on organizations. This is the third session on the um, regular sex sessions on the business environment topic or subject. So today what we're going to cover is the L03 or L03 as it's called supply and demand. We're going to look at the supply and demand and uh, kind of uh, <clears throat> look at the uh, marketing system, market system, how these systems affect supply and demand or supply and pricing decisions in the marketplace. Okay. Uh, some of those, um, we will start some of those factors uh, like pastel factors, right, which is um, <clears throat> main factors affecting the market. PESTEL stands for, as uh, you probably remember, PESTEL stands for political, economic, social, uh, technological, legal, and environmental factors. These are external to the um, organization, and we must be able to look for um, these uh, factors, and the businesses are affected by these PESTEL factors political factors such as um, current tax policies, government um, stability or the political stability in, an in, in the country will affect the policies in that particular country. And economic, um, economic factors like the exchange rate, for example, or the inflation rate, or the unemployment rate, or the economic growth rate in a particular country will be affected if it's um, an unstable or unpolitical, or there are political changes, the economic factors will affect its um, in the outlook towards the world. Okay, so this is the second factor that's affecting. The S stands for the social factors, sociological factors, social uh, issues like the lifestyles, like the growth of population, like the age of uh, population. So if there's an aging population, then the government policies will affect population like housing, hospitalization, or introduction of schooling, uh, or you know other targets that they want to achieve will be affected. If the social factors or lifestyles are cultural, problems, cultural issues, education, or the sociological age, or whatever is affected, then of course the organization and organization is going to be affected by all these social uh, factors because the demand um, and supply of those materials will be affected and the organization will need to take these factors into account when they're planning for their demand and supplying of goods. Technological factors like the introduction of new technology or implementation of uh, technology into their um, business will affect a company, will affect an organization, uh, organizations that um, stay behind, that are uh, lagging behind the technology will of course uh, suffer. And um, you know, if they don't introduce technology, if they don't keep up with the latest developments in research and technology and development and so on, automation and you know security or internet availability and internet introduction or the technology into their uh, organizational changes, they will be of course affected and the organization must take into these consideration the impact of technology on their business, okay? The fifth factor, which is the legal um, factor, or e, the legal um, implications of, say, for example, introduction of new laws into the country will affect um, an organization's behavior or its introduction of uh, some kind of um, laws into their organization. So the legal um, implementation, the legal uh, barriers, the legal um, uh, law, you know, the strictness of the law will affect a business. A business must take into consideration uh, how the law is going to be affecting their employees, how the law is going to, you know, cause a problem for the implementation, say on 
you know, Sex Discrimination Act or Employment Act or, min or Minimum Wages Act or the health and safety laws, how does it affect the business? Then, of course, uh, it's um, very important that the business takes into account these legal issues. Otherwise, it's very hard for them to survive if they don't take any uh, consideration of the law. Okay, the last factor which the business must consideration or what's uh, affected by um, the factor that affecting a business is the environmental issues, the, um, the surroundings, the impact of um, you know, global warming, for example, or the impact of uh, environmental issues or the um, you know, problems such as uh, climate change and the uh, weather changes or you know, pollution, for example, or recycling or you know, other issues connected with the environmental issues, they affect the organization. So therefore, these all pestle factors must be taken into consideration when we are uh, planning, when an organization plans, when they have to introduce some uh, kind of products, when they have to make sure that they follow the pestle um, issues. Okay, so this is very important. Internal uh, analysis also affect an organization. However, because we are talking about the external market factors, which is the, the topic of today, which is a look at the here, which is the understand the impact of the market environment. So we are looking at the market environment on organization, which affects mostly the external um, and also some elements of internal as well. So the market structure, <clears throat> when you're looking at the market structure is di divided into several uh, types of uh, market structures, which is divided into sectors like oligopoly, duopoly, monopoly, and perfect competition. Okay, so let's go through, um, you know, what they mean, how they work, and how the business is affected uh, by them. Uh, when we talk about the price determination on all of these, they are um, decisions about price. Decisions are made generally by considering the supply and demand and the government regulations and the competitors um, prices and the marketing position of the company in, as, a, as a whole. So when an organization talks about the pricing decisions, they are affected by supply and demand and government regulation, competition, and the company's own position. Okay. Pricing is further affected uh, by marketing, by promotion, by the marketing mix, so called P as we talked about, or um, you know the price production place and promotion, which is four piece, which is very important. A fundamental uh, importance of uh, the pricing decision is, you know, looking at the um, four piece, how this is affecting the process of uh, determining what a company will get or in exchange for its products and so on. Okay, so this is very important. When we are talking about different organizations structure, when we're talking about the uh, oligopoly structure, or when we're talking about the market structure, the decisions of what to produce, how much to produce, what price to charge, uh, what price not to charge will be affected. Um, so for instance, in, in, in the situation of um, oligopoly, which is, you know, uh, an, which is, um, an which is a system which falls between two extreme market structures, monopoly and profit competition. Oligopoly occurs when there are few firms uh, in, in the market and they are producing uh, similar or um, you know, identical goods and services. For example, in, in, um, you know, in services like airline industries, when the service is uh, particularly uh, similar to one another, but the firms are um, a few firms, okay? That's known as duopoly, which means that there are a smaller number of uh, competing firms, but they can, or uh, you know, a few uh, firms competing with each other and their marketing decisions are interdependent. One, i.e. one firm takes one action and the other uh, reacts to it. And one drops the price and the other you know, starts to behave a similar fashion. 
Okay, so this is a, a very important. So the pricing, setting the pricing is dependent um, upon the decision of another firm. Okay, it's very important that to take this into consideration, the duopoly um, or oligopoly decision making is very important. Examples of duopoly um, is, is like um, a firm called Visa or MasterCard. These are two bigger firms which are controlling uh, a lot of um, payment processing market in the world. They are known as the duopoly because there are two of them, right? So it's very important that we must know or the firm knows how to behave. Another example of uh, duopoly is like Pepsi and Coca-Cola, who are the two major firms uh, in the shareholder in the soft um, in the drink market, they are affecting the prices, they are affecting the market, they are the dominant uh, people in the drinks market, and um, they are, um, you know, affecting the pricing, they're affecting the decisions, and they under the output decision, they, you know, affect the markets, because the number of firms is limited, there are only two of them, and there are only, um, you know, they're only dominating the firm, which is uh, controlling a lot of uh, market between themselves. So therefore, it's important that, um, you know, they, when they charge prices, they are, you know, charging the prices that are affordable by people, but sometimes they can charge, uh, you know, amount of um, uh, price, amount of charges they can, depending on their production or their costs, and they charge, you know, what they, uh, what they think it's reasonable. So the market is affected by their decisions, which is, uh, we must take into consideration. Another example of um, duopoly is Airbus and Boeing, for example, these are um, you know, these are duopolies in the commercial jet uh, airline market, and they produce uh, goods and, you know, under a monopoly, under um, a duopoly situation. So you must um, make sure that the, the, the duopoly is taken into consideration when making decisions, because the under these, the, um, the, the goods are similar, but the barriers to entry are quite high. Uh, because of uh, various reasons, i.e. the cost of investment and the similarity of product, maybe the cost of uh, setting up the business is very Okay. <clears throat> another system, another pricing structure we can talk about is the monopoly. Now, monopoly is where uh, there's on dominance of um, one particular supplier in the market and they charge what they like. Monopoly structure is uh, where one organization, where one um, bigger organization has the whole market towards it. Okay? They control the market. Monopoly market has a market power. They uh, control the market by influencing the market price. They affect the uh, market by charging what they like because they are one and only in the competition. They can, um, what they're known as the price uh, maker, and um, they are the organizations who receives a lot of profit from uh, their products. They can supply what they want. They can um, increase the price whenever they want. They can charge uh, whatever they like for the prices of goods and services. Um, usually they are charging very high because there are no close substitutes for their products. And because there is only one firm producing that particular product, it's very hard that there are any close substitutes and the suppliers you know, dominate the market, they charge what they want and they behave how they like and there's very little things you can do. Why there is a lot of barriers? Because the cost of setting up the business may be 
quite high. Uh, maybe it's a special area where um, there are very you know limited uh, resources, where there are restrictions by the government. There are uh, there are um, restrictions of copyright, patent, licenses, um, or there are uh, a market where it's difficult um, for new firms to enter uh, because um, you know because of various high investment or development costs are high, or it's a very specialist area. For example, um, you know. Um, areas like gas development or chemicals or, uh, for example, oil production, you know, some kind of a area that's very uh, difficult or electricity production and used to be monopoly. These days, monopoly has um, uh, reduced in, um, in its existence. The monopolistic competition has uh, increased, but the monopoly has uh, reduced because there are, you know, suppliers coming up in the market regarding that the used to be case on monopoly right monopoly is a um, very important market structure and we must be aware of that market structure also need you to understand about marginal costs okay it's uh, these are the um, the costs that result from a unit of production a unit of output and the marginal cost may come about because of a change in the price of essential raw materials or an increase in the wage rate paid to a part-time employees or increase the results from a one unit change in the output, whatever, uh, you know, it's a, it's a total cost resulting from one unit change in output. Then the variable costs, of course, associated with increasing the output is in the short run. Marginal cost, of producing an extra unit is linked you know, to the uh, marginal productivity and marginal productivity is false when, when the marginal uh, product, if they fall, assuming the cost of employing extra unit labor is constant, then the extra cost of the additional unit will also fall. Okay, rise, fall or rise, depending on whatever the situation is. Okay, so the, the marginal cost, when we are talking about the monopolist, yeah, right. to what extent they use uh, this type of uh, marginal uh, cost to increase output. It depends on their marginal costs, right? If there is an increase in output, when the marginal costs are above marginal uh, revenue, or there is a decrease, um, they can decide a decrease uh, output when the marginal costs are below the marginal uh, revenue. So, okay, so therefore it's very important that we take um, these marginal costs and revenue into consideration when producing the goods and services. Okay, so it's important to know that. The marginal revenue is, is a term that you use in economics, uh, whereby um, one additional unit will create more revenue or one increasing one unit of production will increase revenue of some kind. And that's explained as the unit revenue. The last unit item sold will be the unit that has been sold to generate for the firm, revenue for the firm. So going on to the another type of competition, which is known as the perfect competition, uh, a perfect competition when there are a larger number of um, buyers and larger number of sellers, um, in, 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 a, in, a, in a market situation, right? And the product is um, quite similar, right? The product is, you know, there's a quite similarity between the product and there are a large number of buyers, there's large number of sellers. Product is a, a similar uh, or identical um, shape or form, or uh, it's a similar type of um, product. That's um, known as a, a perfect competition. Perfect competition. These days, uh, the closest perfect competition, when we are talking about the market structure of perfect competition, the closest it gets is like a stock exchange and a stock exchange where there's a perfect um, knowledge, there's perfect um, product is similar and the 
larger number of buyers and larger number of sellers in the marketplace. They are very well informed. And, you know, the, um, the, the firms um, are able to charge the buyer, you know, uh, a price that is affordable uh, in the competition, okay? And perfect knowledge, perfect information, flow of information because of the internet, because of the um, you know, people have uh, mobiles and the websites and they can check all the information is available. So there's a perfect uh, transfer of information is available all the time. This uh, type of competition is, um, you know, very, <clears throat> it, you know, it, it, it varies in uh, sector to sector. But the example, uh, as I gave you, is a perfect example, like uh, um, the stock exchange, or this is an um, example of um, what you call the agriculture sector. This is um, where perfect knowledge exists. And uh, there are other uh, auction type markets, which are um, you know, having a, a similar type of perfect competition. Okay. So, when we are talking about uh, market structures, we are talking about duopoly, we are talking about perfect competition, we are talking about um, oligopoly. Okay, now coming back onto your um, assessment criteria, which is 3.1, which is to analyze the impact of supply and demand on prices of goods and services in markets, we are talking about we need to know what is the, um, first of all, we need to know what is the supply and what is demand, right? And then uh, we can um, look at the impact of um, both of these uh, factors, supply and demand on prices of services and goods. So let's look at uh, the demand for um, goods and services first. Now demand is a term that is used by economists to refer to some kind of um, goods and services bought by um, people or they um, willing to buy these uh, goods and services at a particular price in time. Um, so therefore the demand, i.e. you know what people uh, want and what are they willing to pay for that particular price is known as demand. Now there is a difference when you're talking about demand, there's a difference between needs and wants. Now, needs are some kind of um, very necessary uh, products, and wants are something that are, you know, products that you would like to have. So, ones, uh, for example, needs are like um, necessary goods that you have to have, uh, otherwise, you can't survive without them. And the wants are goods and services that you can survive without. So for example, needs um, like food, for example, we need food and water and clothing and everything else. This is a very important um, products. We have, we can't stay without those needs, necessary goods. In other words, we have to have food, we have to have, a, you know, those goods, otherwise we can't. So these are the, needs okay the wants are goods that we can do without for example luxurious goods or goods that are expensive we can stay without so therefore it doesn't um, affect much of a demand okay demand also depends on what we can afford and what we can't afford so if we can't afford something um, then it has no effect on demand so you can just ignore that particular factor okay so um, now let's look at price. Price is something that uh, people are willing to pay at a particular um, price. What are they going to pay of a particular price for a particular um, product is known as the, the price. The quantity demanded is what the people would want at a particular price. So that's known as demand. So um, the law of demand says that, you know, when the price is higher, people will demand less of those goods. And when the price is 
higher, people will demand less. When the price is low, people will demand more of those goods. So the demand, uh, what we can say, the demand falls when the price is high and the demand increases when the price decreases. So this is very important law of demand, assuming that everything else stays the same because the, the law of demand assumes that everything else stays constant, okay? So let's look at an example from the market. We are looking at an example from gas, okay? This is shown in a, in a, in a, a demand curve, in a demand graph here. So if you can see on the vertical axis, we have a price, price of um, uh, gasoline per gallon. And on the horizontal axis, we have quantity of uh, gasoline in millions of gallons. So as you can see, if the price, if the, the price of gas is $2 um, and 20 cents, the demand is 400 gallons or 400 million gallons, okay? When the price falls to $2, then, then the, um, the demand, of course, you know, when, um, yeah, the demand, when the demand falls, or um, when the demand falls, then that means that, you know, we are looking at the increase in um, quantity demanded. When the price falls to $2, the increase of demand on the horizontal side increases by, um, you know, four, um, about another 425, uh, it goes to 450, 450, the demand goes to 450 gallons uh, per, um, you know. So the demand increases, okay? So the demand increases from 420 to 450 or approximately 460 million gallons because the price has fallen. When the price falls further to 180 per gallon, then the demand again, you know, increases to 500 million dollars and so on. So as you can see, when the price falls to a dollar, the price uh, goes to a dollar, then the demand increases by um, you know, it increases to 800 gallons. Um, so therefore, there is an increase in demand when there's a, a fall of a price. So the demand curve moves from the left to the right, okay? Because there's a, a decrease, the price is always decreasing, the demand is always um, increasing. So the law of demand says when the price is high, the demand is less, and when the price is low, the demand is high. So therefore, from according to this particular law of demand, we can see the, the demand rises as the price falls. And of course, if the price um, rises, the demand will fall and so on, okay? So these are very important um, illustration. It's very important relationship between uh, price and between quantity demanded, it's very important that you should uh, be aware of this uh, demand curve, okay? When we look at uh, a supply side, the supply means the suppliers or organization are willing to supply particular goods at a particular price. Uh, so, uh, for example, if we um, want to see the relationship between uh, what is, um, the good supplied and what will be this demand supply. The law of supply says as the price uh, increases, the um, amount of uh, goods supplied onto the market will also increase because people or the organization want to increase their profit. And if the price of um, that particular good falls, the economists assume that the law of supply assume the suppliers will uh, contract their supply and supply less onto the market because they don't want to um, flog the uh, product at a cheaper price because it will affect their decisions, it will affect their price um, profits and so on. So look at this uh, supply graph. We have a, a graph which shows the law of supply against uh, using 
the market for gas. So if you look at the same um, product, but from the supplier's viewpoint, we can see that if we have a, a price um, of $1, right, the suppliers are going to supply us 500 million gallons of uh, gas. But if the price shoots up to $2.2 per gallon, then you know, they are willing to supply us more. And that is about 720 million gallons uh, of uh, gas, so which shows that they are willing to supply us more and more. And then you have all these supply points in the middle uh, and so on. We got 1.2 and 1.4 and 1.6 and 180 and $2. So you can you know, see the effect of price increases, the supply increases, the prices increases, the supplier are willing to supply more of these goods. Okay, so the, uh, this is what the law of supply shows. The lower the price, the lower the supply, the higher the price, the higher they're willing to supply. So the supply side moves from the left towards the right, okay? And this is important and you need to be aware. So they, the supply side slope moves from the left to the right hand side and vice versa if the, the decrease in price um, and so on, okay? So you should be where this, the, how the supply sides behave and how the demand sides behave. When we join them together, the, when we join the supply and demand together and where they intersect, i.e. where the suppliers and where the buyers meet together and they are willing to buy and supply a product at a particular price where they both agree, the market, um, agrees um, to buy and sell, that's known as the equilibrium price. So if you look at this graph, if you look at this graph, the supply we said moves from the left towards the right, and the demand moves from the left down towards the right. So where these two suppliers and demanders or the, you know, they meet, i.e. the public or the producers and the buyers where they both meet, which is at 1.4 and the demand um, you know, is uh, 600 and the suppliers are willing to supply this particular product at um, 140. When they both agree at a 600 um, gallons of uh, supply and demand and the price is 140, this is known as the equilibrium price. Okay, these both agree at that particular price because this is where they meet, this is where they agree, this is where the supply and this is where the demand together, they are willing to buy and sell in a particular market, okay? This is because of the interaction of both buyers and sellers, okay? However, uh, you need to be uh, aware of the excess of supply because if the price is high, uh, suppliers are willing to sell more, you know, but buyers are willing to buy less. So therefore there is an excess of supply onto the market. There is more products on the market than people are willing to buy. So as a result, as an excess of result or surplus of results, price starts to fall, right? But it doesn't fall that much because there is excess uh, demand. And if there is an excess of demand, people are willing to pay a little bit higher. So when they are willing to go to a market and they want to uh, pay for a little bit higher of a product, but the suppliers are willing to sell less, so therefore there is a natural negotiation. There's a natural um, interaction between buyers and sellers and they will haggle and they'll negotiate a price where they both meet and they, may, they, they meet between um, a point where they are willing to buy and sell a product. So this is where they call uh, an equilibrium price. Below the equilibrium price, there is um, excess demand and above the equilibrium price, there is an excess of supply. But in the, when the price and suppliers meet, 
and that's known as the equilibrium price. Okay, so 3.1, when you're looking at 3.1, which is here, what's saying impact, okay, of supply and demand on the price of, um, prices of goods and services. So we need to look at the equilibrium price. We need to look at how the effect um, of um, an increase in or uh, prices affect the demand and supply affects the demand or supply of a product. So we should really be looking at supply and demand from this particular angle. And where they both meet, you should just have the impact like equilibrium. This is the impact where both supplier and buyers are willing to buy and supply the goods at a particular price. This is what we are looking at, the 3.1, the impact of the buying and selling on particular good. So when organizations plan, they need to see the, the demand uh, of uh, their product and the uh, suppliers and they can uh, see the effect on prices as a result of pastel as well as demand or factors on demand. For example, people's rise in income or people's rise de decline in income or people's tastes change or people's habits change or the government effect of the government policies on uh, people's spending power, right? This is um, you know, where the demand and supply will be affected. Uh, and the organizations will have to look at uh, these factors and apply those factors into the owning, into the producing of those goods and um, services, right? Okay. So if you look at this um, particular slide, uh, this is what I was talking about, taxes and subsidies and, um, you know, people's um, impact on income and people's income on prices or regulating the market and the government intervention. So the factors that are outside the control of an organization affect the supply and demand of particular goods and services, okay? That um, just uh, to look at the past um, criteria, 3.1. However, if you want to go for a merit, you must look at the um, response or assess the response of a named organization to changes in the, its market. So you're assessing, you're giving an example of uh, a, an organization which uh, looks at a situation, which um, looks at a situation and plans accordingly and um, you know um, they take into consideration all or some of these um, external factors into account when planning, when assessing the um, you know when assessing the market situation. Okay, so for example, you can give a you know an example of your own uh, organization. How do you uh, apply when um, the tax changes in your um, country, for example, and what would you, how would you plan uh, to cater for these? Or when the government gives you subsidies, for example, when the government gives you help uh, towards producing certain goods, how would the uh, supply and demand affect your organization? Okay, so as a, as a businessman, you should um, be able to look at these factors, how the taxes, uh, how the subsidies, how the government intervention, how the uh, you know uh, supply of particular materials affect uh, your prices, how the demand of particular um, goods uh, or products affecting your policy. What are what are you you know uh, what type of a market structure are you operating in? Are you operating in uh, a kind of um, oligopoly situation or a perfect competition or what type of structure you are following, okay? Uh, so this is very important when we look at um, this, um, okay? So going back onto the, uh, let me go back to the uh, learning outcome. The learning outcome is to understand the impact of market uh, environment not the, on organization. So the impact of market uh, environment on organization depends on uh, many things like supply, like demand, like uh, government taxes, uh, like government subsidies. Now, subsidies are um, given by the uh, government to organizations as a help 
towards producing goods and services. Taxes are um, a kind of uh, punishment or a kind of uh, what you call them. Um, and, you know, the taxes are a kind of a fine on uh, on organizations where must they pay, but that increases the price of goods and services. The subsidies will reduce the price of goods and services, and therefore that will have effect on the demand and supply of goods. Okay, that will affect the, the market regulation. This will affect the state of, um, you know, the state of the market when when you when you planning when you planning intervention when the government or when the government introduces taxes or subsidies that will affect <clears throat> market situation so it's so it's important to take them into planning when we are planning so you need to look at the type of competition you are facing your type of uh, problems that you are facing so what you know type of um, market structures you are um, operating in and the situation of the uh, the external factors you know okay so what we talked about in this um, in this lecture we initially talked about the market structure we initially talked about the external uh, factors affecting the the market structure depends on external factors um, okay um, like the pastel factors the government intervention and so on and so forth we discussed the uh, market different market structures like um, perfect competition where there's um, many um, you know suppliers uh, producing similar goods but the people but the you know everybody has a similar amount of knowledge or share share their information and the product is similar and there are um, you know perfect knowledge the price is good uh, and so the buyers can choose where they want to buy the goods from Monopoly is one uh, one type of um, organization supplying, uh, you know, uh, goods and services. They are there to what you call them exploit the situation because they are all in charge, all in all, and they do what they like. Monopoly is when one producer onto the market and they charge whatever they want. Okay, this is not a good and healthy situation for the market structure. So in between monopoly and uh, com perfect competition, there's um, a type of market structure which is called duopoly and oligopoly. So on one end, you have a one uh, end, you got a monopoly. On the other hand, you got perfect competition. In the middle, there's oligopoly and duopoly. So if you draw a line and write monopoly on one side and uh, write um, perfect competition, Towards the other side, you have um, something in the middle, which are known as a duopoly and oligopoly. And you can find uh, different examples of duopoly and um, uh, oligopoly. Now, duopoly are uh, a kind of, um, you know, two firms operating in, in a market, in a similar market, in producing similar goods and services and you know, charging about similar prices. Whereas oligopoly are a few uh, producers few firm in the, the market and the products is uh, differentiated a little bit but the charging uh, you know different uh, prices but close competition is you know is very imminent there for them and they behave uh, behind one another they talk to each other and they behave in a similar fashion so if one person drops uh, a price the other um, person or the other organization I would say the other organization also behaves a similar fashion. Okay, so their um, uh, action and reaction uh, type of uh, thing they, you know, they copy each other. Okay, like uh, we have a, a drop in price, for example, one petrol station or one organization like Tesco's, they do drop in price uh, per gallon of their uh, uh, petrol. The other firm ESO also tries and uh, reduces their petrol price per gallon. So they're following, because there are oligopolies, um, they follow a similar type of behavior. We have a similar type of behavior in um, in the supermarket uh, sector, like, uh, you know, Tesco's, and we have um, 
weight rows or we have all D and we have a, um, you know, uh, Iceland. So if one um, firm drops its prices of particular pro products, the other also uh, follow suit and vice versa. Okay. So what we discussed today, uh, you need to be aware of the, you know, reaction. You need to be aware of the supply. You need to be aware of the demand. You need to be aware of the uh, social factors. Uh, you need to be aware of a drop in population, for example, increase in population, drop in price, increase in price and behavior of uh, all these uh, external factors. And that will impact the market environment as a, a whole. So when you're planning, when you're looking at the business environment, when we are uh, looking at the environment, uh, the organization must uh, take uh, these factors into account uh, for planning their strategy, planning their um, marketing, planning their production, for example, planning their human resources, you know, all the planning, their, you know, long-term planning, strategic planning, and so on, you know. So it's very important that the organizations take all these factors into considerations, okay? Now, concluding, um, Let's um, concluding this, you can uh, read, um, you know, there are uh, books, there are um, materials on, um, on your Moodle. Um, you know, you can uh, read particular um, books on economics or you can uh, read uh, on something on um, market supply and demand. You can um, go and look for, you know, articles on uh, different, um, you know, different economists, for example, or the Financial Times or the articles on open text, bc.ca. Uh, you can uh, look at the uh, Moodle on, um, you know, in your own uh, time. You can have a browse through journals. Uh, you know, you can look at various economic books and all these principles of economics or demand and supply and equilibrium will be explained in, in that, okay? Um, so uh, concluding this, um, uh, you know, if there are any issues, if you are any problems, uh, you can uh, write uh, on um, learner work at UK University. We can uh, demand or we have to submit your assignment uh, two weeks after the completion of the units. And uh, before submitting the assignment, you try and do some reading, please, and make sure that your references are included and have to access to the Moodle and uh, read widely into the, uh, you know, into the subject. And that will give you a good idea about the 3.1, what we talked about today. Okay, any question? Uh, if you haven't any question, I will stop this uh, recording and I will see you uh, at the next meeting. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.